All right, what is up? Welcome back. We have a package. Now, fun thing about living in the basement is the packages just don't get delivered to my door. So this was actually here for like a few days and the people that live upstairs just delivered it to me. So I get like a little middleman delivery service. But here we go. This is from a uh, viewer of the channel. I dare to even say friend of the program. And if memory serves, it is a, oh, lots of goodies. Okay. I always open it from the bottom first, just because like usually people's address is on the top. So I have to kind of reverse open it. And F3 batteries are new. Once you, you have totally Nice, nice, nice. Love to hear it. What a guy. Bought it with the rewind crank and the classic home. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the top and bottom of these. That's you, so I don't fuck it up worse. Awesome. Okay, so we have two cameras, which is a surprise. I was only expecting one, but more the merrier. So I have a Pentax K1000 here. Shutter appears to be jammed. And then also the Bottom is stuck open. Also, um, got some nice dremeling on the bottom there. So there's that. And then we have da -da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. a Nikon F3 HP, which is high point. I think I talked about that or made a little note of that in the other video. Basically, that means that you can look at the viewfinder further away and it's still visible. I think it was made for people that would wear glasses. It's also noticeably missing the cover here. This is the contacts for the um, power winder. Now, he had said, the customer had said that it wasn't working. Um, I'll have to review the email to be absolutely sure what the issue was, but let me take a gander, get that all dialed in. Yeah, so the on off is not working, basically. So as, I can, as you can see here, it is on. And I'm turning that off and it's still on. And it looks like it's not firing at all. So that'll be interesting. And okay, so this is as good a time as any to talk about this. I'll be making a video, a repair video on this if I can figure it out. I think I have a good idea of what's going on. But as you'll notice, I've not posted a part two for the F3 video, and that's because I don't think one exists, to be honest, which is unfortunate because I thought that I had recorded it, but I guess I hadn't. So basically what happened was the video I'll put right there if you want to check it out. Um, <clears throat> every now and again, when I would advance the F3, it would auto fire. And I had a lot of confusion as to that because I've never worked on an F3 before. There's a lot of mechanics and stuff like that, or a lot of electronics in there, and it's a very fancy camera, so I don't want to mess it up, right? But <clears throat> I had ideas, I had thoughts. Basically, the way that all of the contact points sit right in, up in this area, uh, the on-off sits pretty close to each other, the advance sits right there, and then you've got the shutter button. Basically what was happening was when the advance was thrown enough that would like short the contacts and get the thing to fire So it was just a matter of like separating the contacts and making sure that they weren't making connection every time it was advanced My assumption is is because that camera that I was working on the f3 was previously owned by like a wedding photographer And it came with an auto winder and all that stuff was or a motor drive winder whatever you want to call it basically because of all of that it had seen a lot of wear and tear over the years and basically had created a, um, basically had weakened the system so much to the point where that was happening. So 
that was kind of the deal of it. I mean, that's not the best explanation. It worked. I kept it for a few more days and like was able to get it to work consistently, so we're good there. This I think is probably about the same thing where the on-off contact is just not, it's not sliding over as hard as it should probably. Actually, no, it is. Okay, it was just the one time I did it, but um, I would imagine that there is some kind of issue there in terms of the contacts not separating far enough apart to the point where it will actually turn off. And because it's not turning off properly, that means that there's probably a consistent drain somewhere in the camera, which means that the uh, system, it's not getting the requisite amount of power it needs in order to fire properly. Um, because electrical cameras usually operate within a variancy of like 0.1 volts, I think, or something like that. So if you're dealing with a three volt system, which is two uh, 1.5 volt um, LR44 batteries, it's, it's really slim margins for error. So any kind of like minor electrical issue, which granted doesn't happen a whole lot, it's usually like pretty catastrophic, but any kind of drain on the system will cause it to fail. So I'm gonna take a look at that later. And then the K1000, as he writes, Bought it with no rewind crank and the classic uh, film would advance and the shutter won't fire. I took a look at the top and bottom, but nothing jumped out at me. Time for a pro, that's me. So I don't fuck that worse. Awesome, love to hear that. So first we're gonna start really quickly with just taking the bottom off. It does feel like it's advanced, but it does feel very weird. Now the shutter is jammed. It's not going down properly, so we're going to take a look at that. And I might make a separate video about this repair. So, what we're seeing here is this being caught up there is kind of a good sign. It means that the... Oh, jeez. Okay, so this was stalled out somehow mid-advance. This, when it's uh, loaded up there, means that it's ready to fire. Okay, this is going to be tricky. I'm going to open up the back first, because that will probably help things. Now, it might just be easier to just take the whole top off, so we'll just do that instead. Okay. Bold. Okay, so this is not seated properly, which is fine. It's just mildly annoying, but okay. This is just becoming a repair video as opposed to a simple inspection. So bulb in 400, that's what I'm taking it off at because that's what it was at. And now, to take this off, which feels very loose. Anyway, so I'll be very careful with that. that. Awesome. I love when I do that. Three screws in the top. Boom, boom. And then there's another one that's seated, uh, seated right under there. i to take this off first. And remember, Pentax, anything that's sitting on the advanced column is going to be opposite thread. So righty loosey, lefty tidy. That way you don't crack the lever or you don't snap that off in there as someone who's done that many times you don't want to do that it's not good very frustrating now he did say that he took the top off so i'm assuming that's kind of why everything's a little loosey-goosey which is nice because it makes it a little bit faster to kind of take stuff off Typically, if you're doing this, it's not going to be as easy, so bear that in mind. It's not difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but... <clears throat> I will say, Greg, if you're watching, 
You put this in upside down, which is totally fine, but it just doesn't create the same amount of tension. So you want the crimped ends to go up like that, if that makes sense, as opposed to down. Other than that, pretty textbook job there. Okay. Top is off. Plunger is in there. Now from here, we can access the back by lifting up on that. Right there, these little two screws. And then we can top this off. Oh, that's nice, okay. So there's a rewind crank in there, that is helpful. Okay, and now we can see that the uh, curtain, as I said, is partially advanced, right? It's not fully advanced. And... That would explain why it's not firing, because obviously if it's not advanced properly, the system is not charged and able to fire. But I'm going to have to take a look at this. It's going to take a little bit more time, so I'll make another video about this. But I do love working on K1000s. They're the best intro to camera repair camera, in my opinion. There's a lot of complexity involved, but still, it's all mechanical for the most part, so the simplicity is still pretty much there. But yeah, this will be a good one. This will be very interesting and hopefully make some good content. So shout out to my buddy Greg for sending these in. Good to hear from you always. And I will definitely be taking a look at these very soon. I got some other projects I gotta finish up, but then right back into these. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it as always. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, comment down below if you have any questions. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.